Hey everybody, this is Rex Bear with Leak Project. It's July 6th, 2016. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us this edition. We have Lisa Haven with us today. She is an incredible reporter, has a fantastic website that has current events updated every single day. It's freedomnationnews.com. And we're going to discuss several key issues right now that many people are discussing. First of all, we're going to talk about the minority report algorithms that many large cities are now using for pre-crime type stuff. We're also going to talk about how New York City has created a new terrorist watch list and they don't even really give the criteria to get put on that list, but there's going to be implications because of it. We're going to discuss some of those here today. Then we're going to get into Brexit and what's going on around the world with many of these countries just tired of being in this beast system that suppresses so many. We're also going to talk about possibilities of World War III, the presidential elections all tying together, politics, and will Obama go for the main position in the UN after he leaves office? So some people feel that he's being groomed for that position. And we're also going to talk a little bit about Wormwood prophecy, uh, what Lisa's opinion is of it, and biblical prophecy in comparison to Wormwood possibly being the Chernobyl event that took place, or is it actually a binary sun, is it another planet, is it a comet? We're going to get her opinion on that. And we're also going to talk about some insider information that was released to Lisa about this weird activity that's going on right now with the sun, such as this huge hole right now that some people have seen and Soho is spotted as well. So become a member at leakproject.com and you'll get access to exclusive content first. Also, if you subscribe to youtube.com slash clandestine time lord, you'll have access to the latest podcasts first and free with a plethora of data, always cutting edge. And make sure to go to Lisa's website as well if you're interested in knowing more about the current events and her approach towards news is often Christian-based, which is really cool, freedomnationnews.com. She's also on YouTube. She's got well over 100,000 subscribers on there. Before it's news, many of her articles are featured there. So a lot of good information we're going to discuss here over the next 30, 35 minutes. Enjoy the show. New York... It's disturbing. Again, this this is a document um, that on June 14th of this year, the New York State Senate passed. It's kind of their own version of a terrorist watch list. And it's very um, similar to, say, the sex offender registry, which forces people to register and then they publicize the information. Well, that's kind of what New York has passed on this terrorist watch list. So in the event that that, you know, they uh, that you've committed a terrorist crime, that's what uh, proponents who passed this thing stated that if you committed a crime, you will be put on this list, a terrorism crime. But when you actually go to the verbiage of the bill itself and um, on page four of the of the report, now people can pull that report up on my website, uh, the bill, it's legislation.newyorksenate.gov and it's um, bill, I think S3464 is what it's under. So people can Google that, they can get it from my site. But uh, it states in that bill itself, it says, and I'm just going to read it to you, that those who are listed by the FBI Terrorist Screening Center on the Terrorist Screening Database, those who have been identified by Department of Homeland Security, uh, the U.S. Department of Justice, the Department of Defense, and all these other departments I could list for you, but all those who have been targeted by or deemed a potential terrorist by the government can also be on that list. So it, it, it's one of those things. It's like, really, if it was all about those who have just committed a terrorist crime, then, you know, that's one thing. But that's not the case. It's also those who they deem as terrorists who have not committed any crimes. Uh, and so my proposal is take the verbiage off the bill if you're going to pass something like that. And here's the thing. They also require fingerprints, DNA, and the whole nine yards. So if you are on some kind of target list, your names can be uh, put on this list in New York City, and people can have access to all your public information. Well, now, what do you think it would require for them to do that? They must have specific criteria in order to reach that. That's the question. It doesn't say. Uh, it's it's a just it's like a four page report, and it doesn't get into much detail. So it's very open. So, but it does say it says those committed of a terrorist act. So that would be automatic, and those who are on a terrorist screening center database. 
And that, what database are they gathering that from? Where is being gathered from? And the only thing on the document that it refers to is those on the FBI screening, but it also talks about Homeland Security, Department of Defense, the CIA, National Intelligence, all these other governmental organizations. So could be a number of them. And so I guess what we have to do is, is wait until it's all fully implemented and see what's really on there, because people will be able to access that database when it's fully implemented. It's in the beginning stages now. Yeah, I've also heard of minority report type think tanks where they use certain algorithms, computer systems for pre-crime that in certain areas, I heard in California even, has gotten pretty popular. Have you heard much about that? There are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of algorithms the other way. I know um, they were contemplating. I don't think it's been fully implemented or it's in any stages, but I know there was some contemplation going on, like at your local police departments, how they would create a Facebook profile on people and, and use colors, red, green, yellow, to determine what kind of threat you are based off your political views, based off of the things you say on Facebook. Now, that's not implemented. Uh, let me make that clear. But it was something that has been thrown out there, so to speak. And I don't know to what level or extent we're at with that. I just know that things like that have been proposed. And I think that's very similar to what we're seeing in New York with this particular report document, uh, you know, where they're going to list people who haven't even done wrong. I mean, that is your min uh, minority report style scale right now there's so much going on you look at Bree exit what do you know about that situation well um with with the united kingdom leaving uh obviously it has sparked a lot of other countries to do likewise and i personally think it's a stomp on the globalist head so to speak and you know i think people are fed up with things like the european union uh why can't we vote to exit the un <laughs> you know? right well nobody voted us into that i didn't say i wanted to be in that i never wanted to be a part of any globalist organization like that neither did you and it's and it's and and i can't help but beg the question why would Okay, say you were a leader of a country. You know, we know many of the globalists, the more power they have, the more power they want. They're power hungry. And so a lot of them are. And so when they get up in these leading positions, why would you sign away your power to another authority? Why would you do that? And that's one question I think that we all need to sit on. And um, people like Obama, people before Obama, you know, people in other countries are saying, let's go under the banner of a new world order and put ourselves in this one organization of unelected officials, so to speak, and uh, and do this thing. And it's like, well, there's a bigger agenda in, in play. And there really is. And I think some of these dictators are puppets, you know, that have been allowed in the position because of, you know, some banker or somebody that has a lot of power put them there. Uh, others are in positions of power um, because they've been manipulated there and can be manipulated in office. Uh, we know we have a, a huge pedophile ring in, in the Roman Catholic Church. I don't think that that we're immune to that here in America. I think there's a lot of pedophiles in there. Unfortunately, it's sick and disturbing, but that's the kind of people we're running into. Now, there's good parts in the government. I think there's good people in the government. I also think there's a lot of corruption and a lot of bad. I mean, we got both sides. We have good and evil, God and the devil, uh, all of it. So I think we have to take that into mind when it comes to politics as well. But there's obviously an agenda, and that agenda is to be under the banner of the New World Order. And I think a lot of these dictators are promised more power and more ruling over some of the smaller countries, so to speak. Kind of that's what puts them into the opportunity. They basically sign a contract or say they'll follow certain legislation in order to get to that level. And, you know, another thing, too, that I'm wondering, because there's so much going at a global stage right now, possible attacks with maybe we'll go to war with Russia, China. I don't know. I mean, I feel that maybe they all kind of know how to play ball at a certain level, yet maybe they've decided to create a war back when you know World War II happened. It seems like there was a lot of top-level players that decided to start that war for financial gain, resources, etc. And if we are going to go into this new world order system, I've heard before that there's going to have to be just a catastrophic war, even worse than one and two. So do you think that that could actually happen this year or next? I mean, do you feel that there's going to be another president put in office or do you feel that maybe something could happen to where we're not going to have an election this year? I know there's been talk about that. Um, personally, I think we'll have an election. I do. And I don't, I don't 
personally think it could, you know, it'll, it, it won't happen, but you know, I could be wrong, you know, but my take is I believe we'll go as normal. But what I also believe is that if something is going to happen economically, I also believe that they'll wait until the next president is in. I mean, history shows that's what they do. As soon as the next guy gets in, let's put it on him. So it all, it all comes crashing down when the new guy gets in, so to speak. And uh, Obama's not going to have anything like that under his name. He's, you know, too prideful for that. But I mean, there's much more than that. His agenda's under play. Not that I'm saying that they're going to collapse the economy when the new guy gets in. I'm not saying that either. I'm saying, you know, nobody knows when anything's going to happen. And if they do know, well, they're full of it, unless, you know, they've been proven right on numerous times if they give you a day or an hour. You know, nobody knows the day or the hour of anything that's going to happen, as I, as I stated before. But nonetheless, the thing is, that I think that we need to be prepared no matter what. I mean, I think our economy is unstable. It's not a question of if it's going to collapse, but when. And nobody is 100 percent sure. I guess it depends on how many Band-Aids they keep putting on this thing. And um, the other thing that has me thinking that it will not or Obama won't postpone the election is also because he has his eye on the United Nations. Um, and there have been, I guess, more rumors that he wants to kind of step up over there and have a leading role at the UN. So if that pans out to fruition, I think um, it's a very scary thought. I don't want that guy in charge of anything else. But nonetheless, um, it kind of makes me think that could be more of the direction that Obama's leaning. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, that actually makes good sense. So I'm glad you brought that up because I did read some articles previously that hinted to that as well. So maybe he was kind of groomed for that specific position at the right time. And, you know, with a resume of being the president of the United States, getting into the U.N., I think would be probably the, a pretty easy thing to do at certain levels. Now, you know, but with that said, there's a lot of stuff where there could possibly be a global war that's talked about. Do you think that that could happen? What do you think the elite are going to do to cut down on the population, or do you feel that they're just going to continue to let it grow? Um, no, I don't think they're going to continue to let it grow. I think um, they have uh, GMOs, uh, chemtrails, geoengineering, all that stuff, fluoride in the water in place for a reason. And, and those are basically, um, some are stimulants, stimulants and some, you know, limit lifespan, uh, slow boiling water, so to speak. But at the same time, you know, I think they accomplish more with world wars. Millions of people die. Um, also under tyrannical regimes. If I encourage all your viewers out there to Google um, regimes, tyrannical regimes, and how many people governments in history's past have killed. And what they're going to find is they're one of the mass murderers and more deaths than anything else, more deaths than some of the wars. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's quite sickening. So that's why when I look at my reports and think, you know, look, the, the, they're not our buddy buddy here. <laughs> You know, history proves that regimes are, you know, especially tyrannical regimes, those who are power hungry, will turn on their population, so to speak. It's happened numerous times in history's past, and it will happen again. And I think that their ultimate goal here is, yeah, they want to take us down to a lower population. They can do this through war. They can do this through food, through hunger. Uh, recently, there was a, quote, simulation where a FEMA contractor CN something, I'm spacing on the name, but they were running this simul simulation. It was kind of like a game. How are, how is the world going to be in the years 2020 to 2030? How is food going to be? And they, uh, forecasted a 395 percent increase in food due to availability, due to population, due to this and that, due to climate, quote, change, whatever. And, um, they did this whole thing. Well, obviously, uh, they are thinking, you know, maybe 20, 30 years from now or 10 years from now that we're going to be having major food shortages. Well, whether that's planned or part of the agenda, that's to be determined. What I do know is the government's storing up on food. I have uh, friends in the food business, Food for Liberty being one of them. And um, they tell me all the time, yeah, the government is mass buying up food. Now, why would they do that? you know, for military, for personal, for whatever. What do they know that we don't? The short end is they're preparing for something, but they don't tell their people. We weren't told about the 2007, 2008 crisis when that hit. Did you get an email or a warning? No. no. It just all hit us in the face. Same with every other crisis that we've had in America. They don't warn us. They don't tell us. And it's on purpose. You know, obviously they don't want to incite riots, but at the same time, we don't get any kind of warning. But all we can do is look to see what they're doing and prepare, if they're preparing, we prepare. 
if you see, a, you know, those in the government doing one particular thing, well, take that as a clue. And that's what I like to do on my channel as well. And um, other people is like, let's look and see what's going on. Uh, now, if we go on the war aspect of it, we have people like Russia who were kind of provoking. And I, I don't think, I think um, we don't need to underestimate what's the Russian bear. And I think sometimes, you know, we can do that. And so we're provoking other nuclear powers uh, with the backing of NATO, who Russia isn't a NATO ally. Now, they do have some kind of, quote, relationship. But there are lots of things in play on the war aspect. And I do believe countries go to war to help financially. They need more money in the country. Let's go to war. That's going to bring more money. And so a lot of those are pre-planned. Again, back to Operation Northwoods. They wanted to plan a war with Cuba, so they did Operation Northwoods. Is, or the people we need to be worried about is somebody like Iran or North Korea, these small countries that don't really have the prowess of maybe China or Russia. I mean, wouldn't it be the biggest threat like China because they have microchips oftentimes in many of the government computers and just computers residential around the world? You know, they could steal information. They hack into our government all the time. Yet our threat, we need to worry about North Korea. I think, you know, both are both are a threat. China, North Korea, uh, all of it. I mean, we know, like you said, China has often been known for hacking. King Jong-un has been known for making nuclear threats repeatedly. And, um, you know, I think he's one of those cry wolf guys. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, he repeatedly does it. But one of these days, you know, there is that fear. Is he actually going to do it? And, you know, I think that I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, if he does, he's, you know, his countries were obviously a lot more capable. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, there will be repercussions. And he knows that. And so some of them um, incite and they do play war games. And, and I think, you know, there are buddy-buddy systems, globally speaking. I mean, we know throughout history there was alliances being made during World War I, World War II. That's what sparked some of the World War is one country would align with another and then uh, one country would align with this one. And then you have this side and this side sort of, sort of like we have. We have NATO alliances and then there's some that are not part of NATO. China is not part. Russia is not part. And so we see these alliances forming of non-NATO countries because one is scared of the other. And similar to the first world wars that we had, uh, there were backdoor deals. You know, Germany would go sign with this country unbeknownst to that country. And I think a lot of that still takes place today, and which is why I think we could be brinking eventually on the brink of, a, of another world war. I mean, there's lots of tensions, there's economic instability. I mean, we, there's alliances, sh uh, shady alliances being formed. And all we have to do to see if a world war is going to happen is once again, look to history. What happened uh, to spark it? World War One, World War Two. And it wasn't just about, you know, the death of Archbishop uh, or Ferdinand, but it was uh, more than that. Absolutely. And another thing, too, there's a lot of speculation about what CERN is doing right now. Some people feel that it could create some type of portal to another dimension or create havoc upon the Earth. Others think that it's just being used for a, you know, finding certain molecules and such. I don't know what to think. Where You write about CERN and the, the differences that are talked about on your site versus, you know, the mainstream news. So let's go with that for a couple minutes if we could. Do you feel that CERN is, is, has a big impact right now on maybe new technologies or well i think it does do what certain says it does uh, but i also think it could go beyond what they're saying it does and so it's probably a little bit of it could could be and i'm not certain because i don't know the all the ins and outs of cern now i have had um anthony patch i don't know if you know who he is no um, i haven't heard of anthony but he studies a lot on CERN and whether or not they're linked with demonic portals, some of the symbology that goes with it. And he's got some interesting stuff. You know, you talked about the Gothard Tunnel. I don't know if you saw that big satanic ritual. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> it was disturbing. Uh, uh, I didn't know what to think. And then, But it's similar to some of the things that CERN will put on their commercials. I mean, they have this, this black mask figure in a circle and it's white figure and, a, and they do this satanic-ish ritual. And, you know, and there's a lot of um, Satanism. So it makes me question why, why does CERN feel the need to do that? Why do they got an image of Shiva at their Geneva Center? Why, why do certain things? And so it kind of makes my alarm bells raise and, and a a seriously ask the question. But either way, I don't think we should be messing with particles in that manner because we don't know the repercussions it could wreak. Certainly.
and there's just a lot of mysticism behind it. And if those people that are, you know, first thing they see Shiva out there, they're like, what in the world isn't Shiva the, the god of the afterlife? Or, you know, there's a lot of speculation out there. I haven't done enough research to know exactly what Shiva is. I think she's from more of a Hindu, uh, yeah. a Hindu deity. But yeah, I mean, it's I absolutely. God of death. I, I, I believe something around death. Right, right. That's what I've heard too. So there's a lot of interesting stuff that's going on and, and certainly bizarre events and then NASA's talking about how there's not as many sun flares going on with the sun right now. And that's another thing that I know you've got a really cool article up on freedomnationnews.com where you talk about NASA and the monster hole also in the sun. I mean, what's going on with our sun? Okay, well, I had once a former White House advisor, John L. Casey, that is his name. And he used to work for NASA, actually, and did a lot of work for them. But uh, when I had him on, you know, I really, we really delved into detail about what's going on. But as far as the monster hole in the sun, it's, it's um, uh, this coronal hole. It's a low density region of the sun's atmosphere. And at that time, it measured more than 10%. Now, these do happen periodically, but not to this extent so much and not to that size. So there's lots of questions and speculations as to why. And why is this happening? What's causing it? What does it mean for our near future? So there still are unanswered questions, which is why I did have John L. Casey on. And um, he wrote a warning letter to FEMA on solar hibernation. And this letter went out, gosh, it was a real big report. I, uh, last year, I believe. But he basically said that we are entering into a very dangerous period because the sun is hitting what he called a solar hibernation, a period uh, that historically proves there is upticks in catastrophic seismic and volcanic activity. And so this is what solar hibernation causes, according to John Casey. And he says that um, things like uh, the new Madrid could go off, you know, and things like uh, increased in earthquakes and volcanic activity are very likely. Now, he sent this warning letter to FEMA. FEMA had no response, didn't warn the media, did nothing, kind of remained quiet on it. And um, so he put out his own press release on that. So it's interesting that there are, you know, things out there such as John L. Casey and what he's claiming. I don't know with 100% certainty on, on that aspect of it, but I try to get information on, you know, people who know about that information, have them on and get their opinion on it. And I can only take what they have, people who study it for a living. And John Casey, that is exactly what he does for a living. And he is the CEO of the Earthquake and Prediction Center. Uh, he's also got numerous um, other websites on it. but. I just, when I, li when I listen to his stuff and then I go with what's happening daily, well, uh, for example, this year there was 40 volcanoes going off simultaneously, all at the same time. Now they may have um, started at different times, but they were all going off, 40 of them. I believe it's, it's either 38 or 40, somewhere, one of those two. But that's, that doesn't really happen. And then I went and Googled, well, how many are supposed to go off a year, you know? <laughs> kind of need to know that information. Right. So, and as it turns out, only 60 a year is on average is what erupts worldwide, 60 a year. So for 40 to be going off simultaneously, it's unheard of. So therefore, based off that, based off of the earthquakes increasing on a yearly basis, I, I think that, you know, his warning letter holds some merit. Right. And also, there's just so much speculation about Planet X and if it's going to be here soon, if it even exists. And you had an article talking about NASA Insider basically speaks out about Planet X. What is your thought about it? And tell us a little bit about that article, if you would. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I go up and down about Planet X. It's one of those that, you know, it has been talked about for a very long time. Um, and so, you know, I like to... Paul Bagley is one of those. I thought his information was interesting on that particular one. Uh, my personal take is I don't think any asteroid is going to collide with Earth and take us out. <laughs> you know, or just planet. Because, yeah, it's you know I don't uh, I don't know I don't see that. You know, I, I mean as a Christian, as somebody who studies Bible prophecy, uh, the Bible does tell us of wormwood, which many believe could be an asteroid that strikes, but it won't take out the whole planet. You know, it could impact a section. You know, we have. Uh, meteorites striking all the time, you know, minor devastation, you know, on, on a lot of them. Some of them do nothing. They all disintegrate before they get here. Right. But we do know, uh, you know, if you study Bible prophecy, that there is one coming called Wormwood. So, you know, maybe that could be uh, Planet X, so to speak. Some people and, uh, say Chernobyl like 
I sorry to interrupt, Lisa. I was just going to say a lot of people say that the Chernobyl actually means wormwood in Ukrainian. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I have seen that before. Um, but if that were it, the other things in in Revelation would be happening. You know. Mm -hmm. So, right. but I think it's. Uh, I think what I do think is Chernobyl could be. Uh, basically, you know, not a precursor, but just a sign of things to come, uh, so to speak. And I think God does do that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I tell you, Lisa, it sure has been nice to talk to you. I know that we had some technical issues at the beginning with the audio. That was very strange. And you just have so much knowledge, and I really appreciate your energy and what you do. Thanks a lot for coming on the show with us here at The League Project. Yeah, thanks for having me on. And um, sorry about that pause <laughs> with the, with the uh, delivery guy. So. Oh, no worries at all. Absolutely none. And, you know, I, I apologize for being a little bit late. And before we close out, Lisa, is there anything important that you'd like to share with us that maybe I should have asked but didn't? Yeah, um, not, I think I think we got a lot of it. But I'm, my my thought for everyone out there is, you know, don't fear. Don't give into panic. That's what the government wants. It's, you know, you just need to understand the times in which you live, ha be hopeful and, you know, get ready for them. Prepare spiritually, prepare physically and uh, get right with God. Right on. Those are some good words of wisdom. I'd also recommend our listeners go to freedomnationnews.com. You can check out the updates. You put on multiple updates every single day. So a lot of current events on there, alternative news. You're all over beforeitsnews.com. You've got an awesome following on YouTube. Just type in Lisa Haven on YouTube, folks, if you'd like to watch some of the videos that she puts together. Great podcasts. Also, if you go to leakproject.com, we have exclusive content on our website. Also, deals and specials, promos with many of our guests and the the books and supplies that they offer. If you use the term leak project, we have some specials with them. And also check out Lisa's website too, because she's got some great deals on food supplies and other things. So a great store on there also, Lisa. Thank you for everything. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. I, I really enjoyed it. Fantastic. Be the change you want to see. Have a wonderful day. This is Rex Bear. Goodbye. Hey everybody, this is Rex Bear with Leak Project. It's July 6th, 2016. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us this edition. We have Lisa Haven with us today. She is an incredible reporter, has a fantastic website that has current events updated every single day. It's freedomnationnews.com. And we're gonna discuss several key issues right now that many people are discussing. You know, first of all, we're gonna talk about the minority report algorithms that many large cities are now using for pre-crime type stuff. We're also going to talk about how New York City has created a new terrorist watch list and they don't even really give the criteria to get put on that list but there's going to be implications because of it. We're going to discuss some of those here today. Then we're going to get into Brexit and what's going on around the world with many of these countries just tired of being in this beast system that suppresses so many. We're also going to talk about possibilities of World War III, the presidential elections all tying together, politics, and will Obama go for the main position in the UN after he leaves office? So some people feel that he's being groomed for that position. And we're also going to talk a little bit about Wormwood prophecy, uh, what Lisa's opinion is of it, and biblical prophecy in comparison to Wormwood possibly being the Chernobyl event that took place. Or is it actually a binary sun? Is it another planet? Is it a comet? We're going to get her opinion on that. And we're also going to talk about some insider information that was released to Lisa about this weird activity that's going on right now with the sun, such as this huge hole right now that some people have seen and Soho is spotted as well. So become a member at leakproject.com and you'll get access to exclusive content first. Also, if you subscribe to youtube.com slash clandestine time lord, you'll have access to the latest podcasts first and free with a plethora of data, always cutting edge. And make sure to go to Lisa's website as well if you're interested in knowing more about the current events and her approach towards news is often Christian-based, which is really cool, freedomnationnews.com. She's also on YouTube. She's got well over 100,000 subscribers on there. Before it's news, many of her articles are featured there. So a lot of good information we're going to discuss here over the next 30, 35 minutes. Enjoy the show. New York, 
it's disturbing. Again, this this is a document um, that on June 14th of this year, the New York State Senate passed its kind of their own version of a terrorist watch list. And it's very um, similar to say the sex offender registry, which forces people to register and then they publicize the information. Well, that's kind of what New York has passed on this terrorist watch list. So in the event that that you know they uh, that you've committed a terrorist crime, that's what uh, proponents who passed this thing stated that if you committed a crime, you will be put on this list, a terrorism crime. But when you actually go to the verbiage of the bill itself and um, on page four of the of the report, now people can pull that report up on my website, uh, the bill, it's legislation.newyorksenate.gov and it's um, bill, I think S3464 is what it's under. So people can Google that, they can get it from my site. But uh, it states in that bill itself, it says, and I'm just going to read it to you, that those who are listed by the FBI Terrorist Screening Center on the Terrorist Screening Database, those who have been identified by Department of Homeland Security, uh, the U.S. Department of Justice, the Department of Defense, and all these other departments I could list for you, but all those who have been targeted by or deemed a potential terrorist by the government can also be on that list. So 